This continent whose culture is equally diverse and energetic is in urgent need of energy solutions. Africa's population has already exceeded the 1 billion mark. With this kind of population boom, the demand for energy is soaring. For a long time, Africa has been depending on fossil fuel, its shrinking forests and other non-renewable sources to meet its energy demands. Every year, around 700 million people depend on traditional cooking technologies to, to meet their daily energy needs. Here in Zambia, a country of 13 million people, 70% of the population relies on charcoal for cooking. The result? An estimated 250 to 300 hectares of forests the size of Zanzibar Island is destroyed in Zambia alone every year. It's massive deforestation. So the use of Burma's energy sources for cooking is a major challenge that the country has to deal with. And dealing with it really is not just something that should be left to the forest sector alone. Uh, we need to address issues to do with energy supply, particularly our energy mix as a country. Faced with the real threat of losing the forest cover in this southern African nation, the World Wide Fund for Nature is introducing alternative clean energy to communities here. WWF is working towards ensuring that communities in Africa have access to cheaper and sustainable forms of energy that reduce dependence on fossil fuels, charcoal and fuel wood. There was a study by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations that discovered that because of this high dependency uh, on forest, natural forests for cooking, Africa, the deforestation happening in Africa was 90% dependent on the consumption of charcoal and firewood. Through its Earth Hour initiative, an annual event in which cities the world over switch off lights for one hour, WWF's advocacy for clean energy has spread across 178 nations. Here in Africa, WWF teams in six African countries including Kenya, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Cameroon and DRC used the Earth Hour to drive awareness on the impact of climate change on the continent and the role of people in tackling climate change. And so, as big cities switched off their lights, Africa's villages like this one in Zambia switched on their clean energy sources. I'm using a supermoto stove. It's user friendly and it's even cheaper to use the pellets. The pellets are sold in supermarkets and some petrol stations. Patricia is, however, able to enjoy her cooking due to the support of the Swedish government, which, through WWF, has subsidized the price of the supermoto stove she owns. The other distribution that we've been doing a lot of is um, actually going out to the high density areas, the compounds, because those are our target people. So we have been going to them, we've been going to churches, we've been going to different, you know, different, uh, we've been working with women's groups, uh, to, and we've been working also a lot with uh, companies where we do, we, do, uh, we do a demonstration in a company and then we do a payroll deduction so people can buy them. WWF is making inroads into Zambia's remote villages with its domestic energy programs through its collaboration with Network for Environmental Concerns and Solution, NECOS, a local non-governmental organization. The challenge with changing fuel is that you, it's a different way of cooking. So there is a challenge, so you have to get people to understand how it works. Um, people are used to, for example, with charcoal, when, you ha when the fire goes down, you just add some charcoal on top. If you do that with pellets, it will smoke. So that's not the way you do it. You have to, you fill your, your stove according to amount, the amount of time you want to, to cook. So you have to teach somebody that if you fill it all the way, then you'll be able to cook for two hours. Uh, if you fill it, if you only want to cook Nishima, for example, you would fill it up a quarter or halfway. 
In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the concept of Eko Makala is changing the way domestic energy is consumed in Goma town, home to huge volumes of population settling here as a result of political strife. The aim was to reduce uh, char charcoal consu consumption in, in uh, Goma town and the other side it was to, to set up tree plantation to, um, um, to enable local population to produce themselves, to reduce deforestation inside Virunga National Park and to protect the ecosystem. The trees are harvested after every four to five years and used to produce affordable charcoal. Na kwa sasa kupitia msaada wa WWF wamekusha kutufundisha jinsi gani ya kuchoma makala hali ya kisasa na hasa hapo tena mekusha kuinua uchumi. By 2014, over 8,000 hectares of trees had been planted to produce eco makala. Hizi ishiko ni nzuri sana. Kwa mama hii ishiko mewasaidia sana. Kwa sababu ile wakati ambayo likuwa kenda tafuta makala wala kuni porini, kwanza wengi walikuwa wakibwa kwa kule, wengine nyoka zitawaluma. Hizo watari zote mama amepumuzika, anastarehe sasa, anaikala. WWF's solar success story is replicated in Uganda, where the Clean Energy Champion District concept has been successfully piloted in Kasese District. Located in southwestern Uganda, Kasese is in the Albertine Rift, a top tourist destination. The rift overlaps most of Uganda's protected areas popular with tourists such as Queen Elizabeth National Park. Kasese District 1 was chosen because of um, key considerations. One of it was the poverty status within Kasese. Uh, secondly was uh, Kasese's geographical location. In terms of 60% uh, of the area in Kasese is more under the protected areas. Uh, the other bit is the low energy access or low electrification rate, which was around 7.2% uh, at the time we started this. And at the same time, um, you realize that there is a high population growth in Kasese. WWF has brought together more than 20 organizations and numerous local groups. Together, they identify, pilot and demonstrate innovative ways to increase access to clean energy for the rural poor. We are responding to a UN call, United Nations call, of Energy for All by the year 2030. And as, as a district, we said, how do we respond to this? How do we fit in? Because Uganda as a country has ratified that, that convention. So it means that we have to localize these ideas of increasing on energy access at a district level. Through the home solar lighting and improved stoves that use little fuel wood, the project has helped to save forests and enhanced environmental conservation. Karambi Senior Secondary School in Kasese has immensely benefited from clean energy innovations. WWF has supported the school to build modified latrines with an ingester that converts human waste and cow dung into cooking gas. This biogas project saves the school money worth 15 trucks of firewood every month. The waste product, this bio slurry, is further put to good use as manure in the school farm, bringing more savings on food materials. And I'm so grateful that they have inspired us as younger youth and I believe when we add up our efforts in this conservation system we shall be able to achieve because I believe myself we are the future leaders of the world. On the shores of Lake Edward, life in the remote fishing village of Kayanzi has brightened up after installation of a 5 kilowatt mini grid system that supplies power to three quarters of homes and businesses. Inside the plant, the distribution numbers, they are numbered from 1 from one to 128. So it means the capacity of the system here is supposed to accommodate 128 households. Besides the power project, WWF encourages community members to form groups that enable them harness their savings to start income generating projects. Some of the ventures, such as video viewing houses, use the off-grid solar power. Siku ya nyuma, najua meme iye bado kuja hapa, ya kuwa problem. Tukua tunafanyisha generator, 
Jenataka kila siku jenereto na unaweza kaifanya leo kesho inakufa lakini saa hii tuko mzuri kama kuna umeme unaona with the solar power reading at night has become an enjoyable experience for students who attend day schools before we got this solar power uh, we, i had some problems with my vision um, cuz we could use some tadobas lamps which were harm to my health cuz they could release some smokes that causes problem to my lungs even my eyes i could shed tears while reading and it was not easy for me to achieve my education but after getting this solar power i'm now reading as i want even i can read up to the time i want i feel asleep tangu miaka 50 na tulikuwa tuko kwa jiza tunafanyiza parafini tumefurahi sana maana kitu hichi kimetusaidia sana chaji mtu na charge simu yako mwenye tv anatia tv a mother of seven bitris bira embodies what Kachungiro Women Development Association Kawoda can achieve. Beatrice was also trained as a trainer and as a result she has been making improved energy saving stoves but also training other Kawoda members to make stoves. Hatia emba ni anga ote hatia na masenyo omwanda we shiengwe. Ngaunze wiki ngana mutsumbishawo kandi mojokoni isimwete sebya muchimo nene. So Ha 17 year old son Mwambale Mathias a Kanyambora SDA secondary school student is happy to spend his free time contributing to the improvement of the planet instead of engaging in social vices that have trapped some of his peers i am used to the work i'm earning incomes from the cooking stove now my leisure is being consumed at working and i'm ready to acquire the money and i can buy my school books the school shoes now even the trousers i can buy for myself besides brightening their homes and powering their energy cooking stoves the community now has access to entertainment they could never have being far away from the national electricity grid this model enhances sustainability and creates employment hence promoting growth of local economies in this community is within the village of, of Kachungiro where the village has 179 households and out of 179 household Kima we have reached 76 households in acquiring uh, solar and improved cook stoves thank you so much partners from WWF for reaching the community through its energy hub WWF regional office for Africa has adopted a multi-pronged approach to address energy issues. WWF's work combines supporting countries to develop sustainable energy policies, building capacity among civil society organizations, mobilizing communities, raising awareness, and building sustainable energy models. <laughs> In Kajiado, a county in Kenya's Rift Valley region, residents face a unique challenge that is occasionally fatal. Kajiado is home to Maasai pastoralists, whose major livelihood is pastoralism. Wild predators like lions and hyenas, however, are decimating their herds by dozens. This is one of Kenya's hotspots for human-wildlife conflict. Conservationists reckon the wildlife migration corridors have either been encroached and in some instances completely blocked. And as their habitats shrink, 
the animals stray outside the reserves, destroying crops and causing indiscriminate injury and death among livestock and people alike. Initially when they come out, we did not know whether they are inside or they have gone, so we were in a danger all the time. Herders hope to keep themselves and their herds safe by keeping vigil all night. Often the strategy fails. The wild animals sneak into the kraals, killing cows, goats and sheep. An effective and lasting deterrent has however been discovered. Lights powered by solar, one of the clean energy alternatives that WWF promotes in Africa. Through the Kajiado Light Initiative, WWF partnered with the Kenya Wildlife Service to enable communities in areas prone to wildlife attacks to install the affordable solar lights that scare away predators. We have forgotten about uh, kerosene, other type of uh, light that we were using for the good of our children to study in the, during night. Uh, now, in fact, we are so much um, grateful for all that because nowadays we it seems we are a little bit comfortable with our life. His wife and three children also benefit from the solar installation. They use it for cooking, lighting and reading. The Kajado initiative uses a co-financing model. Homeowners invest about 100 US dollars the price of two or three goats for a lighting system. WWF Kenya provides deterrent lights worth $240. The Kajado County government is also funding the excavation for biogas in two schools. Kimura Primary School, which started in 2008, has been using hurricane lamps that consume paraffin for evening and morning preps. And with a population of nearly 300 students, it was proving expensive. Parents are now able to charge their phones without traveling far to Isinia to charge their phones. Children are able now to contact their morning preps as early as uh, 6. During our 2014 results, the school had a mean score of 223. In the last year, 215. The Minsko uh, hiked up to 248. The ability to educate and inform this young population is quite important. And the work that the Education for Sustainable Development does is a very huge complementary work uh, to ours. We have been involved in a couple of uh, joint initiatives with that program, particularly in Kasese, in Narok in Kajiado, 
where we have supported schools to, act, to get access to energy because access to energy supports education and education supports access to modern energy. So the two really reinforce each other nicely there. As a, we do pilot work in energy, uh, like for example in Uganda, you will have seen it, we've took, taken on one whole district to bring energy into that uh, district through sustainable uh, energy source in a business model, value chain. Now, that is to show the government that it is doable. If an NGO and a group of communities can do this at the district level, surely a government can take up and scale that up nationally. It's also to demonstrate that solutions are there if sufficient consideration is given. And so the whole approach really is about demonstrating trying to scale up, innovating, while at the same time trying to also attack the overarching drivers of, of biodiversity loss. We have an overall vision uh, as the energy program for Africa of a future where 100% of all energy needs in Africa are met from renewable energy by 2050.